Welcome to Beyond the OR with Dr. Kevin Brenner. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I wanna take you beyond my world of plastic surgery, diving deep into exciting hot topics and delving even deeper into compelling characters that I've met along the way. We'll be talking with attorneys, actors, comedy writers, Navy SEALs, and many other fascinating and inspiring people with truly intriguing stories to share. So let's jump right in. Welcome back to Beyond the OR. Today, we are very excited to have in studio with us Evelyn Iocolano, right? I got yes, that, nailed you. it. Uh, <laughs> sounds Hawaiian, but it's Italian. Uh, Evelyn is an actress. She is the co-founder and executive director of Lollipop Theater Network, which is a nonprofit which brings movies and celebrities to hospitalized children around the country. So today we're gonna to learn all about Lollipop Theater and about your Genesis story, because we're super interested in it. So welcome Thank you. to the show. Thank you. So nice to have you. I've heard so much, so much, so many nice things about you from Adam, Adam Jordan. Yes. Uh, who, what, tell me what he's doing. We pay him to say nice things. Oh. <laughs> that, that explains a lot. It's like my staff. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the way it is sometimes. Um, so no, ever since he started working with you, he's been telling me about uh, Lollipop Theater and I, I personally had never heard of it before, but I've educated myself on it uh, quite a bit since he's working with you. So um, tell, I, wanna, I wanna hear all about it. So tell me what was sort of the genesis story of Lollipop Theater? How did you get involved and, and what prompted you to, to bring this to kids around the country? So why not is the first statement, is why would you not wanna do something like this for kids around the country who are really needing um, a moment to forget where they are? So we started 22 years ago. Um, there was a woman, there is a woman named Janice Fisher who was a volunteer at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. And on Friday nights, and this is gonna tell you how long ago this is, even though I said 22 years, when I say blockbuster, Right. She would rent a movie from Blockbuster <laughs> right. on a cassette. Um, a, well, the hospital would rent it. She would be there on Friday nights, and she would help set up the playroom. And she had this idea, which I think is both simple and pretty brilliant. Why can't kids in hospitals who see all the advertisements on the televisions that they have in their rooms or from their siblings or their friends, they know about the movies that are out, why can't they see movies just at the same time as their friends do? And at that time, the the time from the theatrical release to home video release was six months. So it was yes. much longer and they right. knew they were missing out on one more thing. So it was her idea. And then she started to put a group of people together um, to try to get movies. And a mutual friend introduced me to her. I was working at the time, I believe I was working for my friend Craig Ferguson, who you may recognize Gee, from- oh, yes. A little, little name Scottish there. Yeah. Craig Ferguson, <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I thought this was a great idea, and I took advantage of the position I was in uh, at the studio lot to start asking for favors. And I always say I was, uh, I used to say dumb, I'm gonna change it to naive enough. I was naive in that I didn't know who I shouldn't be calling, which is the best way to start something. Yes. So I started at the top, and, <laughs> and they said yes, and they took meetings with me, and it was a simple idea, but obviously you can understand that they kind of were concerned because there's piracy issues, right. right? So they are asking me, you want me to give you my movie while it's still in the theaters? Do you understand what that means? And I thought, don't worry about it. I'm gonna come to your office, I'm gonna pick them up myself and I'm gonna go to the, um, move to the uh, studio, to the studio, to the right. hospital, show the movies to the kids, I won't let it out of my sight and then I'll bring it right to you. And they said yes, they said <gasps> let's try wow. it. Wow. And I did feel at times like I was doing a drug deal because I would like pull into the parking lot, <laughs> somebody would come out and kind of, don't tell anyone, here you go. But these kids were so happy to be able to see movies and to be transported into a world of their imagination as opposed to being focused on the beeping noises of the machines in their rooms or the IV that they're hooked up to. So that's how it started. Six months after that initial meeting I had, and that was with the then president of distribution at Warner Brothers, he brought me into his office and he said, give me a list of all the people who are not giving you movies and I wanna help. Because it's a simple thing where you can really, really make a difference. And it's not just a difference for the kids, it's a difference for the families as well because it gives them an opportunity of together, to be together um, and to enjoy something like they normally would at home. 
they, they set up like a little movie night theater, uh, I mean, a, a big screen ish, big ish screen in, in a room in the hospital, right? So, yes, and something else as well. Because you have to think when you go into the hospital, there are 100, 200, 300 rooms. Some of those kids are mobile, some of those kids are able to move into a, a group playroom. Right. And in those cases, we roll out a red carpet, hand out movie tickets, Aww. show that on the screen in the hot, they usually have big <clears throat> screen and we're able to show it on that screen. But what was really important, and there was a, a volunteer at the hospital in New York that I mentioned earlier, who um, when he saw that I was there and, and learning about what was Janice's idea, he asked me to follow him and he took me into the hallways of the hospital and he showed me all the kids at bedside. He said, these kids, can't go to the playroom, they're too sick, they can't leave their room, don't leave those kids out. So when we do the group screenings, we also make sure to go bedside and those kids get to take as long as they need to watch the film. They may need to stop to go to the bathroom, they may need to stop for a medical treatment, but we wanna make sure everyone gets to see it, so. Oh my God, it's and a full day. Yeah. And how beautiful because these kids are excluded from like what every, from going outside and playing, from like, daily life and to be able to experience something at the same time as your friends are that aren't at the hospital, that is a beautiful gift. They're, they're not missing out on something else. Right, right. And it's these are things we take for granted. Like when yeah. a movie comes out, and especially if you are living and working in this town, you're getting free movie tickets to go to premieres and screenings. And a lot of times you're like, oh, I don't feel like going tonight. Well, there are kids that really would love to go. Right. So this is a simple thing that I think really makes a difference for them. And, and we believe it hopes, we hope it helps them in their healing, uh, just to give them the, the, the strength. You know, I had a friend who passed away from cancer, and I remember visiting her towards the end. And at that point, she was at a family member's home here in Los Angeles. And she was on the living room couch. The shades were drawn. It was dark. And I thought no, we, let's go outside, let's get some air, let's get some light. Like when you have felt sick, when you've had the flu, we do kind of like go into that mode of I feel bad for myself and it's dark. Cocoon. But, but when you change that and when you, you put some light into the room, it changes your whole perspective and it changes your spirit. So that's what we're hoping we, we do for these kids and their families. And a lot of people don't realize, but I mean, these are kids who, like, pediatric, pe kids who have pediatric cancers, um, often are in and out of the hospital, like chronically for a good portion of their childhood. Uh, I mean, obviously there's other medical issues. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of immunologically compromised kids who maybe have to be in isolation because they can't even be around the other kids in the hospital, which I assume is a lot of the kids that can't be yeah. moved, right? Um, but these kids, like I know, you know my, my daughter has a friend who had, um, I believe, Leukemia as a, as a maybe four year old, five year old, and it, it it just having to go through. I mean, it's bad enough having it, but having to go through as a child the process of constantly being at the doctor and constantly being in the hospital, maybe getting chemotherapy and feeling like shit. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really affects their life socially, educationally. And emotionally, and so like to to be able to have that is yeah. is amazing. So um, so you kind of the you started with Memorial Sloan Kettering, right? We started with Memorial Sloan Kettering. And you just kind of spread it. I mean, I, I would assume I would assume that as soon as you started talking to Children's Los Angeles and Orange County and and, and Chop in Philadelphia and like all the Mattel, like I assume that as soon as you, you talk to them, they were all like on board immediately. Yes. I mean, I would, think that, I would think so, right? We have more demand for our programming than we can reach, and yes. So we started at Morrill Sloan Kettering. You have to remember, I had a job. I was working for Craig. Um, and then I was back out here in Los Angeles, so I went to CHLA. I went to Mattel Children's Hospital and, and still kept my job. And then I had spoken to one of the child life spe specialists who are true saints. These women, mostly women, I wouldn't say all, but mostly women, spend day in, day out trying to make their lives a little bit easier and prepare them for surgeries, prepare them and their families for maybe something worse. Uh -huh. um, but they, they're amazing. I'm sorry. I know. Oh, no, but I mean, 
this is this is good because when I not good and this is good that we're talking about it because this is stuff that we like I'm blessed to have a healthy child and you don't really think of these of these right. things and I was just when you were sitting there the the passion that you must have had when you first started this to talk about it for the the, the executives to give you their new release <laughs> must have been like they really believed in it and your passion and your drive for it really helped create this really cool thing. Maybe, but how are you gonna say no when I come to you and say, will you let me screen your movie that you make for kids, for children that are suffering from life-threatening and chronic illnesses in the hospital? Who's gonna say no? They may find different ways to try to do it, but I would think you have to be a really hard person to say no to that request. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, I'm, and I have to say, you know, look, Executives in Hollywood get a really, you know, bad rap a lot of times. And there have been times where I'm talking about people that have been really meaningful to Lollipop's cause, and other people say, are, you, are we talking about the same person? And I say, yeah, you may see one side of him or her, but I get to see another. And that's another thing to remember is we've got so many different dimensions. And just because you're having a hard time with someone and you think they're whatever you want to call them, there could be a really good heart in there that will be revealed when they have the opportunity. So we have right. to not forget that. Um, but back to your question about the hospitals being interested, the answer was yes. No one was doing this on a regular basis. And uh, the child eye specialist that I was talking to had mentioned something uh, that they had that allowed them to send a message out and it would reach everyone in their position at hospitals all around the country. And I thought, yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you let people know about it? I didn't realize the impact it would have. Because what I was doing, and that's the other thing, is we don't realize sometimes the impact we have on, on people. Um, Were you not geared up for all nope. that? No, well, it wasn't like meant to be a, a small tank. project. It wasn't meant to be a small yes. project. Yes. So much so that Craig finally said, are you working for me? Or are you working for something else? And I said, I guess I'm working for something else. Um, because I was away so much trying to do this. You know, once you go in and you see those smiles and you see how excited, or a kid jumps up on the bed who can and is like pumping their fist because they're excited you walked in the room with a movie, Aww. how do you not go back? I mean, that's what motivates me. And, and there's a story I always tell because it's really significant to me. And I cry every time, so I'm going to prepare you now. But um, back to I that. I do not have any. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might do. not now. Let's see. Um, but back at that first hospital, um, I had gotten a call from one of the child life specialists, and they wanted their child was three, their patient was three, and they said, you know, we, we uh, want to bring him Monsters, Inc. He's been asking his mom for Monsters, Inc. Is there any way we can get that movie to him? And I didn't have it right away, but I did say to her, I looked uh, on the internet, and I said, you know, there's a DVD release in five days. You don't, you don't need us. You got five days. You can rent it. You can do it yourself. And she said, no, he won't make it through the weekend. Can you come here tomorrow? Um, oh wow! So I was lucky enough. Again, this is network is part of our name for a specific reason. It's a network of people who have really great hearts and really good connections. I got the movie. It was a VHS tape that I had, uh, and I remember being embarrassed walking down the hallways and really I didn't want to be there because I thought what am I doing here like this stupid black plastic box I'm bringing into his room like I, I want to do more for this kid and I can and so I went into his room and he was cute blue eyes and spiky little blonde hair and he was snuggled up on bed with his grandmother and so I, I just wanted to be respectful. I said, should I sit on the side? She said, yeah, can you wait till his mom comes back? I said, sure. And a little while later, a woman walked in, and she was very tough, which you have to be. And I introduced myself. She did not smile. She said, can you step outside for a second? And I thought, oh, I did something wrong. And I stepped out of the room. I can still remember exactly the door. It was There's two doors in this little uh area in the hospital and she was in the left one and I she closed the door and she turned to me and her, she was already uh-huh streaked with tears and she just said I privately wanted to tell you uh, and thank you for giving me so empowering her giving me the only thing my son has asked me for before he leaves me oh my god so I got it <laughs> 
I'm sorry again. I know. But you empower people to give something to their children. And she had no power at that point to do anything but to make him happy in that moment. And she made the request, and she was able to fulfill the request. And we were just a small part of that. And so the three of them snuggled up on the bed, and they got to watch the movie. And I have not asked any questions since then. But oh that gives me the fight when someone does want to say, well, it's difficult. And do you know? Well, then let's figure out a way not to make it difficult. Like, there's got to be a way to do this. So yeah, that, uh, that email went out from the child life specialist to other hospitals. And boom, 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 boom. I got all of these emails. And I thought, oh, wow, I didn't realize there were that many hospitals, first of all, in this country. I think we got 50 initially. Um, and I don't have the team to get to all of these hospitals. So, you know, myself and other team members at the time would fly around the country because we had to escort the films. And we'd go to different hospitals and, and screen the movies for the kids. We'd spend the entire day there and then bring the movie back, lock it up into a safe, and then start again. It's changed, obviously, a little bit. Uh, not a whole lot because there's still security issues. But there's digital that we can use. But then there's security codes. Um, but what hasn't changed is the joy it brings these kids, really. The fun part is that when the um, celebrities started joining us, so the stars of the film start showing up into the oh hospital. Oh, my God. And um, one of the best memories, I shouldn't say best, because there are so many amazing memories, but one that stands out uh, was Hugh Jackman. And we were showing one of his movies, and in the playroom, uh, they didn't know he was there. And I had prepped them at the beginning, and I said, you know, at the end of the movie, we have someone who worked on the movie who's here to answer any questions for you. So think of the questions as you're watching the movie. And so when I walked back in, I said, I hope you enjoyed the movie. And there was, I was paying attention to this one teen because he had really not a whole lot of emotion. And when I finally said, hey, Hugh, can you come here? He still was like this. And I was bummed. I thought, oh, I thought I was going to surprise him. And when I was talking to his mother, she said, no, you did. He was in shock. She said, before you walked in, he and his cousin were going through a list of who they thought it would be. And Hugh was the first one they crossed off the list and said, too big, no way he's here. So when he walked in, he just was doing that. And when um, Hugh was walking around bedside, he's such a generous human being. He really is. I had to keep telling him at each bedside, because we had so many bedside visits to make, but he wanted to spend quality time with each one of those kids. But we passed one of the rooms, and they had these uh, like kind of like a loose sight frame stuck on the door to give them some personality that they could put something in it. And there was a picture, and I don't think it was on purpose, <laughs> of the Justice League. I don't, well, I posted it online, I guess I could say. It was a picture of the Justice League, and his manager caught, caught it out of the side of her eye, and she grabbed it, and she showed him. So we got a pen. He put claw marks right through all of them, and then wrote, you know, Wolverine was here. <gasps> H.J. Oh my God. And I went to put it back. He was like, don't put it back in there. They're going to take it. You have to hand it to her. But those things are really wonderful memories because Lollipop gives people like Hugh Jackman, like the studio executives, like you, the opportunity to create these memories and these moments for these kids and families which are desperately needed in these situa situations. That's really special. I mean, I, I think you know, there, there's a kind of a sentiment that around the country, not in LA, I mean, I grew up in LA and lived here most of my life, <clears throat> but that, that Hollywood is, is very superficial. Yeah. Um, you know, actors are full of themselves. Right. And, um, studios are only out for money. And that all may be true to an extent, but I think people forget the the power of movies to people. I mean, I know growing up, even though I grew up here, like going to a movie when I was a kid was like, I mean, I, I remember waiting in line for an hour to wow. see Rocky or Indiana Jones in Westwood, you know, the, when the lines used to be around wow. three city blocks and you just wait in line to go see these movies. And it, it's powerful when you're a kid to see these movies. Yeah. Um, and, and powerful to, to meet the actors, right? I mean, that, that's, really, that's really super special. It's kind of like make, make a wish on steroids. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to fill out any paperwork. They're just going to come to you without you asking. Um, but what you said about going to the movies 
waiting online, that experience, that community experience on a big screen. I, I, I miss what's happening a little bit in the industry. Me too. And I think, you know, when you are in a theater and something funny, there's a funny scene and you're laughing, there's a difference from when you're laughing alone or with two people at home to when you're laughing in a community environment. It's that much funnier. It yes. really is. I mean, I remember watching a movie and I thought it was the best thing. I went to a screening. It was everybody was laughing. I told my friends about it. They had the DVD. We watched it at home and it was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought like, it was a great movie. Yeah, it's not the same. But you need, you, we need to be around people. We keep isolating ourselves and it's Wh tough. Which leads me to my next question is, I mean, I, I know this, the genesis of this was in 2002, right? When VHS tape. Right. I mean, my kids don't. They look at a VHS tape. They're like, what the hell is <laughs> what this? What do I do with this? Um, and then DVDs, and then Blu-ray, and then streaming, right? Yeah. And so now that we have streaming, that that sort of changes the whole conversation. It did, bef outside of this, it, it did, right? It's, it's completely revolutionized the whole Hollywood process. Um, and then, you know, like, how did that, in A, initially affect what you were doing. I would think it might make, maybe make it easier for you guys to do it, um, or maybe it made it more complicated, I don't know. And, and then 2020 hits, and then all of a sudden you can't do big events, like no, one, you know, no one's allowed in the hospital, right. you, can't, you can't be more than six feet right. from anybody else. Yeah. So like, how did the COVID shutdown affect all the events that you were doing. I would imagine not there, not a single celebrity is going to be go visiting a child in a hospital when, you know, it's hard to get your parent, the parents in there, right? Right, but they did, right. and I'll tell you how they did it. Yeah. Well, two things happened. The studio stepped up, and they allowed us to start streaming the movies. So we had competent, trustworthy people in the hospitals that we would say, here's the setup, here's the day you can screen it, here are the codes, no photos, no videos, just for the kids. So those movies kept going. The studios made that oh, happen, wow. which was awesome. amazing. On top of it, any swag that they have, they were sending it. They were, again, motivated. Because, look, I think when the pandemic happened, we were all, at least everyone I knew, everyone was looking for a way to help. If you were in a position to help, you wanted to help. And it was one of the first times that our hands were tied because we weren't supposed to leave the house, so we couldn't go out and help wasn't a disaster that you can go and donate food or be there to help. Um, but what we did is the hospitals let us know on May 13th, 2020, that we couldn't visit anymore. They weren't taking any more outside visitors. On May, March, March 13th. On March 20th, we launched our online programming series. So via Zoom, and we've got a lot of people, you know, we try to make sure everything is really safe for these kids. So you can't just tune into our Zoom. You've got to be on our RSVP list. We have to know your device name. We have to make sure who you are before we let you in from the waiting room. But at that time, we started the Zoom program. So we did, we started with story time, uh, get creative, and invite only. So story time became, and now you have to think, we have kids around the country right. tuning in, able to be seen and heard. Heard, I had to learn how to make sure we keep we knew how to mute. get to that mute button really <laughs> quickly because they're kids. Um, seen and heard by people like Anne Hathaway, who's doing story time. Zoe Saldana's doing story time. Wow. Jack Black is a great storyteller. Oh, I love story Jack time. Black. Yes. You cannot not love Black. Jack Black. And you can't, like, not laugh. No. Yeah. School of Rock, yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, one of School my of Rock, I films. sent him the extreme video with him and Jimmy Fallon. Oh that was so funny. <laughs> He's, I love Jack. He's Black. great, and he's yeah. a good human being. He really is. Uh, so those people wanted something, wanted a way to give back, and they were able to do that from home. Just tune in, read a story, and then take questions. And they wanted to come back. Zendaya, um, trying to think who else did it, Tim Allen, um, just people that I can't even think of at this point because there were so many people that wanted to give back. DreamWorks Animation, Nickelodeon Animation, we started a Thursday drawing session so their animators that work on the shows like SpongeBob and Loud House will come on and teach the kids how to draw. Wow. Uh, and they're serious. The kids are serious because I have to tell the artists, go slowly. Not your slow, but slowly because they are following and when they show you their artwork, you're going to be amazed. And then Fridays became... 
uh, invite only. It could be a safari, it could be a magic show, it could be an arts and craft, or it could be the cast of the kissing booth. We do try to make sure we reach pediatrics as infancy to your early 20s, and a lot of times two demographics get missed. Boys, because everyone goes in arts and crafts and Barbie and... Right. You know, so boys want to play video games. Um, girls too, but there were, wasn't anything specifically for boys. And then also the older teens were, they made it known right away. When we were bringing movies in before even the online stuff, we were bringing all the G-rated movies and maybe PG, and they were like, what about, what about us? us? Yeah. Oh, I want it. Yeah. Yeah. And so as long as they're old enough or a parent consents and the hospital consents, we can bring them that movie so they can just be who they are at that age. Well, well this is incredible because it's more than just movies what you're bringing to it's them. It's more than just movies. So, so now that things have kind of opened up again, has, have those story times and things continued but in person? Well, they, they are still uh, online because of this. Uh, with Zoom, instead of bringing Zendaya into one hospital, she's going into 20 hospitals. Instead of spending the day at one hospital and meeting 20 kids or 30 kids, you know, we had Chris Pratt on recently. Two, at least 2,000 patients, family members, staff were tuned in to Chris Pratt, 70 of them on screen, which is really rough because wow. I host those. Oh and my God. Like, Where am I looking? And who's <laughs> raising their hand? And stop unmuting. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to find a sweet spot, and I think it might be the in person visit at a hospital with a partner hospital that really understands our mission. Look, everyone, it's a business. Hospitals are businesses, and I know their marketing has you know, them in mind. But if they could just give us a room that we can visit their kids and then step out into a private room and do a 20-minute call with the hundreds of other kids around the country that would like that. Because kids in Alabama, kids, kids in South Carolina, kids in Texas, wherever they are in this country, they're not going to get the same type of treatment, celebrity treatment, Hollywood treatment, as you will in LA and possibly New York. Mm -hmm. So they're getting things that they probably won't ever have, uh, which, is, which is great. So no, they haven't stopped. We're trying to figure out, because now we have a small team with so much programming. Both the screenings are coming back. We've got four movies in a row right now. Wow. Ruby Gillen, we've got The Flash, we've got Transformers and Spider-Man. Um, and then you have the online. We just did a, a, a tour of the firehouse, the boats specifically down in San Pedro, uh, because the uh, first, LA's very first, after nine, she's the 19th fire chief, first female fire chief, wow. usually leads these um, tours for us. She had jury duty that day, so someone stepped in for her, and I thought, even the fire chief has to do jury duty. That's wow. interesting. You would yeah. think she'd be able to get out of that. I would think. You have some <laughs> excuse, better than the ones I come up with. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, did, did you get kind of similar response from kids, even on Zoom, that you would? I, I mean, I would think that the impact of having Chris Pratt at your bedside would be different than on a Zoom with 100 other people. I mean, I mean, especially in a hospital setting. I, I just yeah. recently took uh, my kids to go see, to a screening, a private screening of um, the new Fast and Furious, Fast 10. Mm -hmm. And I, mean, I didn't tell them anything, but. We were, I mean, there must have been 40 people. It was, it was super private screening. And Vin Diesel walks in. My kids yeah. went bananas. Yeah. And, you know, this is, I mean, they were like, they were like, like, oh my God, like just to be in the room with yeah. him. I mean, they didn't even like really interact with him, but just to be in the room with him, they went yes. absolutely bananas because they're huge Fast yeah. and Furious fans. So, and so I would think that to, to have, and Hathaway at your bedside. Or Absolutely. Jack Black, or Chris Absolutely. Pratt, Chris Pine, whoever it is, is, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. You, you can't recreate that type of feeling, like when someone walks in that you're, you're a huge fan of. You just can't. Um, so yes, we will continue those. I think our first we did was Chris Pine recently. Um, and he did do both the in-hospital visit and the, um, the Zoom, what I love about the Zooms is when, a lot of times I'm working with team members and they're really protective of their clients and they should be. And so it's, you know, even though we do a Zoom that's an hour, they want to cut it to 30 minutes. I get it, let's do it. 
but when once they're on, I have had the publicist go, take another 10 minutes, and then like, you know what, just forget it, finish what you're doing, make sure every kid gets their question asked. Yes. Or Chris Pine said, you know what, the next time we do one of these, we should book more time for this, shouldn't we? And I'm like, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> really great idea. I like idea. that. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Um, well, you just had a big event, right? I did. Tell us a little bit about that. So last Sunday, the 11th, was the fifth annual Lollipop Superhero Reveal. So this one I'm really, I'm excited about all of it. And this is a different dimension of the organization, but still staying within the movie kind of theme. Uh, we get to work with designers from the Costume Designers Guild. And these designers are like the head designers from all of the Marvel movies or from Aquaman or from Hunger Games. They're not just, you know, uh, they're amazing. And they're generous. And we take about three months, and we ask the hospitals to suggest a kid from each one of the hospitals. We had seven kids this year. And we take those three months. I give them a questionnaire, and I ask, you know, what is their superhero? The first one, this, this is also a great memory for me. There was a, a young girl, beautiful young girl, and I explained about this project. And she, she was about 15 at the time, and I said she was a burn victim. And I said, you know, which, you know, what superhero are you? And she's like, well, I like Batman. I can be like Batgirl. And I said, oh, no, no, no. Like, you are a superhero. What are your powers? What is your name? You're an original superhero. And she started crying. And she's like, oh, no one's ever done God. this. Here's another beautiful thing she said. We asked her what her uh, superhero power is. And she did have half of her face was uh, burned. She was three, and she was next to a a tank that blew up, so her whole half of her body. Wow. So when I said, what's your superpower? And she said, uh, I want people to feel as comfortable in their skin as I feel in mine. Like, these kids wow. blow me, <laughs> blow me away. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. I know. <laughs> um, so I'm we, crying this whole interview. <laughs> it's good stuff, though. It's like yes. people giving back and, and inspiring others. So Sunday was the culmination of three months of work where seven of these kids got to create their own special superheroes. So we had um, Super Stella, and we had Furious Fire, and we had Super Alana, and we had Catboy. They come up with their oh names. Oh my god! The I love costumes it. are amazing. I wish I could show you the posters hey, right wait, now. So you have you have like uh, like costume designers helping them make create costumes, or are they doing it on their own? No, the costume designers are creating it for them based oh on what the kids want. So, so they go to the, the places where they do the superhero costumes and they get them made. It's like, these aren't, you know, Halloween costumes that you get yeah. in Spirit Halloween. They're, they're different. They're camera ready. They're camera ready and comfortable for these kids. And then we're lucky enough to get Brian Bowen Smith, who is an amazing photographer who does most of the movie posters you see and magazine covers and shoots every model and every celebrity, he donates his time. We go to Coyote Studios and they have a, a photo shoot. We take a photo of them that we're gonna, we will surprise them. We don't tell them, but we're gonna surprise them with at the event where we turn it into a movie poster. So we have oh my God. a company do, that does the movie posters for the studios does it for these kids with the log line and the billing block and oh, special. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> They're really cool. You have to go on our Instagram and see the posters. Um, and, uh, yeah, we surprise them. And then we also take a picture of the family members who we all give capes to because they're superheroes, too, and they get a, a keepsake photo of them with their kid. Uh, and then Sunday was the big event where we get to announce them, introduce them to the world, surprise them with their poster, and it's a really feel-good event. It's a oh real feel-good. Because there's just so many people, back to what you said earlier, there's so many people in this industry with huge hearts, and they want to oh, give really? back. And they want to give back within their own wheelhouse. You know, sometimes you ask people to give back in a way that they don't know how to, or they can't, but if you ask them to do it in a way, like, Brian, you're a photographer, will you take photos of these kids? Yeah, and he's great. Well, Evelyn, what you're doing is, is so important to give kids and their family a moment of normalcy and a moment of amazing joy, of, of laughter. You're giving them the gift of, of laughter. But also you're dealing with a lot of tragic stories with young, young children. How do you put back into yourself to be able to continue? I had a friend that would volunteer with cancer kids when the, some of the kids died, and he, he was like, it's, this is really painful. And I said, well, how do you keep going? Right. 
And so how do you keep going? Well, I'm probably not as good as I need to be about taking that time to recharge and to make sure I'm processing that. I tend to compartmentalize and I don't ask a lot of questions. I just focus on the task at hand. People will ask me, well, what, what does this child have? Do you know what happened with this child? I don't know. It's not my, I can't know. So I think that might be one way I protect myself is not asking too many questions. Um, but I've got amazing people in my life. I've got amazing friends. Um, who keep me grounded, who help me in those moments. And, and sometimes really in those moments, I just need to be alone and have right. those days where you cry your eyes out. I, I, I can remember being, when I first started doing this, being in the car and I was in traffic and I just was so angry. And then I started crying and I couldn't understand like, why am I, this is ridiculous behavior for just being in traffic. And then I realized where I was the day before. And I bottled, 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 and then it came out. But it's, it's heartbreaking and it's joyful at the same time because right. of what I see. Um, we had a patient there that couldn't be at the event the other day. We're going to do a surprise little party for her in the hospital next week. But she is four years old and she's waiting for her heart. Um, and so... She's had her costume made by these major designers, even made a doll for her, uh, and we'll surprise her at that. But seeing how excited she, she was, she was on Zoom watching our event, and the person who had set up the Zoom, I asked him, if she's still on the Zoom when we get to her, because she's going to be last, let me know. And mom had said, oh, she's four. She's going to turn off. She's probably not going to be watching it. And when I looked at him, he said, she's on it. So I was just announcing her, and I said, so everybody, will you please help me say hello and I, you know, mentioned her name, and the whole audience erupted. He turned the camera so she could see the audience, so I got to see her, and to see her like this. Aww. She was so happy. So those are the moments that get me through, I think. That feed your that, soul yeah. to keep going. Yeah, yeah, and I have creative things that I do outside of this, or I, I'm a, a wanderer. I love to wander and discover things, like not have a plan and get in the car and go, or when I'm in New York, just walk and discover all of the amazing things. I'm a New Yorker, and I still keep discovering things there, the architecture and the different communities that even I didn't know about. So I like the, those things, when there's no plan and you just kind of stumble upon things or people to see and, and get together with. You also host, right? You do interviews with, with celebrities. Well, I do it for the Zoom calls. Awesome. So it's for the kids. I host with a, with a celebrity to introduce the Jack Black to the kids and then to help field questions from the, for the kids or to, um, you know, come up with some questions as well. And that's really fun for me. You know, it's really, really fun to get to meet these people and get to see, uh, again, the good in people. You know? Well, and also you were an actress, so you get yeah. to... Put your acting chops before, on. Absolutely. Yeah. Before Craig Ferguson. Absolutely. Before Craig Ferguson. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to act. Um, and then that never went away, but this showed up, and it's kind of hard to do both. So I would say I'm an executive director first, and my hobby is acting when and if it comes around. Because there's just, there isn't a whole lot of time for it. Not that I wouldn't want to do it. It's just kind of hard. Yeah. It's a business, right? Yeah. And, and, and you've grown it quite successfully, where do you see um, the network going from here? Like, how much more do you think you can expand? Are you planning on hitting every children's hospital Gosh, in I the wish. country? Is it something that you foresee maybe going international? I wish. Yeah? Wherever there are kids, they need this joy and this light. If we can build a network of people who we can really trust to be in their local community supporting those communities. I think that's the only way we can do this. It's not just from where we are in our office. It has to be, you know, the, the local community in Chicago or in Alabama or whatever area we're in that comes together. It helps raise money for us to do what we're doing and to be the, be the, the foot soldiers on the ground to go in and help us facilitate. So I think a volunteer network work of people can help us really grow. Yeah, I want to reach every hospital that's been asking for the movies, for asking for our programming. That's, that's our goal. Um, and to even maybe even have a presence in the hospitals, maybe a, a lollipop child life specialist or a recreational coordinator who can not only handle the programming we are offering, both online and screenings, but in the times where we don't have program on certain days, they can create other lollipop programming specifically for those hospitals and those kids. So how can um, non-celebrities like us, uh -huh. uh, non-entertainment people who aren't in the studios, or at the agencies, yeah. or aren't celebrities, how, how can we help to further the effort of Lollipop? So those are the people we really need. 
And I think people automatically think, I have nothing to give, I'm not in the entertainment com community, but we'll falter if we don't have the rest of the people. The first and easiest thing is follow us on social media. It's just at Lollipop Theater with an ER at the end, not an RE, the, the American way. Talk about Lollipop. Tell people about them, about us. Tell them to follow us. If we can build those numbers, it's again, it's business. If there's more people on social media following us, we may have more chance of getting sponsorships from different corporations who feel like we can give you funding. Can you promote us? And, and there's a good way to do it, but they don't care if we don't have a lot of followers. So nobody cares about supporting if you don't have a lot of followers. So I would say that's the easiest way to do it. And share. Follow and share. Follow and share and talk about it and donate any amount is welcome, any amount. People think I need $100. You don't. You can donate $10. You can do a $5 once a month donation where you can set it up on our website at PayPal where they'll do $5 a month. That's less than a Starbucks coffee. Um, there's there. <laughs> um, true. Yeah, and so there's ways to give back, but it needs to be consistent and it needs to be through people who are not in the entertainment community. And then they can volunteer. They can contact us at info at lollipoptheater.org and um, tell us where they are. And there's background checks. Obviously, we're working with kids. We need to go through certain checks. Um, but if they're the right person that can help us volunteer in the hospital, we would love that. Yeah, they need man, men on the field, you know, like that that manpower, too, because this is such it's, a big... It's extensive. Right. Yeah, it's extensive. Right. I mean, and I, I see it just growing and growing and growing and growing, so... Um, I will Good. definitely follow, and I will definitely share and spread the and, word. And all of you guys need to follow and share and make sure you go on to uh, Lollipop's Instagram. Um, one thing I like to ask everybody before, don't be worried, it's not that bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you had a little look of worry for a second. One thing I ask everyone before we wrap up is, uh, if had you not gone into acting, hosting, entertainment, hmm. What do you think you would have done with your you took life? everything away from me just now? <laughs> Acting, well, hosting, well, you, entertainment, you've already charity. Done, you've already done them. Oh. Shake, that's it. <laughs> there's nothing else. Yeah, no, there's there's so much more. I mean, I would have to investigate more. I think, you know, I think we don't do a good job of teaching our kids, or we didn't all the different opportunities that are out there for them. And I think I didn't know. I love languages, so I think I would have liked to have been a translator maybe even working for the UN. I love to, Ooh, yeah, I would have so liked cool. to have done that and communicate. What that's a cool answer. Speak? I speak English and Brooklynese. Brooklynese. Uh, <laughs> Italian? You're Learning a, you're, Italian. Your family's Italian, right? I am, my, half of my family was, my father was Italian. Yeah. Uh, the other half is uh, Eastern European. Uh, they spoke pig Latin in the house, so there was no languages that I learned, but I'm learning Italian now enough to communicate. And I'm actually, I've applied, fingers crossed, across, put some good juju out there for me. I applied for my citizenship, so I could do a dual, dual? citizenship. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for them to respond. Amazing. Yeah. So, oh so maybe the next country of expansion maybe. will be Italy. Maybe. Oh, wow, that's exciting. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I, well, I am definitely up for that expansion. I will come visit. Anywhere in Italy, I love Italy. Me first too. First on the list, second, first. I don't think Me anyone too. else would want to go. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Tuscan's countryside. I went to, I went to Lake Como. Oh. oh my God, that's so beautiful. Do you remember where, what specific town you went to? Oh my God, no, but I remember it was this, we got to Italy, we checked in, it was the same day Versace got shot oh. in, in Miami and we were, Right, really close to like George Clooney and right. uh, and Versace's home right. in Lake Como, and it was George like George didn't invite you over. No, <laughs> and you haven't been back since then. I haven't. You have to go back. Oh, I know. You have to go back. That oh, when, if this year my travel plans, one of the things is I want to go back to Lake Como. I went to a place called Varena, and it's just it's so charming and beautiful, and you get on the ferries and you go and. Oh. Uh, maybe we need to sh shoot a podcast over there. Yeah, and I'll be I've your guest. To, I've I've Evelyn's to gonna be our guest. <laughs> We're taking when, when we expand. Yes, it'll be a follow-up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So, Evelyn, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you both. This is so interesting. Um, I think I think uh, everyone watching and listening is really gonna respond to this. I hope so. Yeah, we need them. I don't know how we you can. Them. You gotta kind of have a empty heart to not 
respond to this at all. I agree, but you just take out that phone and follow at Lollipop Theater. If it's the only thing you do, do that. Fantastic. So, so at Lollipop Theater, any other way to get in touch with you guys, or is so, that the best way? Uh, we've got our website, which is lollipoptheater.org, and that's I'm going to spell it because everyone spells it incorrectly. Okay. Lollipoptheater.org, L-O-L-L-I-P-O-P-T-H-E-A-T-E-R.org. And then there's our Instagram, our Facebook, our YouTube, but it's all pretty much at Lollipop Theater at that point. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Beyond the OR with Dr. Brenner. Make sure to subscribe, like, and follow so you don't miss any future episodes. In the meantime, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at KevinBrennerMD and KevinBrennerMD.com.